You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome. I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On today's show, we'll discuss Nigeria's power sector and quick fixes that should happen post-elections. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets. And for comments on our election coverage, you can use the hashtag NigeriaDecides410. And you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. Now, finding solutions to the issues plaguing Nigeria's power sector is no easy feat. But what quick fixes can the sector achieve after Nigeria's election process concludes later in the year? Joya Gaji, Executive Secretary, Association of Power Generation Companies, Adetunji Adeye, Regulatory Manager of the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, and joining us from Abuja is Pedro Omotweme, partner at PwC Nigeria. Of course, so we're exploring solutions for Nigeria's power sector. Now let's get right to it. Thank you so much for your time today on the show. Pedro in Abuja, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Esther. Thanks for inviting me. Tunji, let me start with you. Before yeah. we go into the quick fix, first of all, let's, let me quickly mention this. Uh, President Buhari, for his, uh, this campaign, the campaign manif manifesto, uh, he says that the plans are on the way to increase uh, generation to, power generation to 11,000 megawatts by 2020. That's, uh, according to the government, an additional 4,000 megawatts because currently... The, they say that it's, we are currently at 5,000 megawatts. So, so let me start with you, Tunji. Before going to the quick fixes, I think it's a good, a good place to start will be to know what the current challenges are. And good that you, we have representation from both the discos and Jenkos here today. So for the discos, what are the current challenges for the discos? Okay, um, the challenges for the discos are numerous. And um, it's one that we've uh, almost you know, given up on. Um, the critical challenges that faces all of us, not even the discos, but the whole power sector, is, okay. is, the, is the issue of right pricing. The electricity pricing has been just one factor that has been um, neglected and um, that governments and all the stakeholders are bothered to deal with. Uh, the shortfall as of today has ballooned up to 1.5 trillion era. So if you keep building a shortfall in a market as huge and as dynamic as this, you are never going to have efficiency across the, you know, all the chains of the industry. So it's, we are very delighted to hear the president wanting to increase you know, our generation. But without addressing the price, we're still going to have bottleneck. Because as you know, transmission is still very constrained in, in terms of even transmitting that uh, um, generation energy. Okay. And also, if you, you know, increase the volume and you don't necessarily address the price, you're still going, not going to be able to um, supply and reach Nigerians with this energy. Okay, so to be sure that I understand what you're saying, are you referring to the cost-reflective tariff? Well, indeed, um, cost-reflective tariff, yes, that's it. But uh, what we are now hugging for on the distribution side of things is not necessarily cost-reflective tariff, but how do you address a shortfall that will uh, let the market to function? So we are saying uh, government should, first of all, recognize the shortfall that has built up and then find a way to create um, an asset, regulatory asset base to ac account for you know, the difference in pricing. So that gives this course investor the confidence to bring more money to put into um, mm -hmm. the industry and then you know, do the necessary expansion you know, to drive the, the business. But if you don't introduce the right pricing and then you don't introduce any solution or mechanism to take care of the deficit, you are not going to have uh, an investment in a led um, so, in a situation. Okay, in the course of the show, we'll look at we'll talk about all the other challenges because I mean we have limited time today. Joy, let me let me come to you for the discos. Like Tunji has mentioned, for now one of the major uh, challenges is pricing. What for the Jenkos? What is that one pressing? I know they are numerous. But what is that one pressing challenge for the Jenkos? Um, since you're limiting me to just one, <laughs> it's liquidity. In every market and in any market, um, my, our colleague uh, from Abuja studio can confirm, a generator in any market does not look for where his money comes from. All he is focused on is generating the quantum of energy that the market demands. It's only in Nigeria that after generating, after taking loan to generate the power, buying gas to generate the power, you now start chasing the money as well. So liquidity is our number one problem. And if the government can solve that problem, then generation com companies can. The 11,000 megawatt is actually uh, from what the president has projected. That is even limiting the country. Because currently, we have installed capacity of uh, 13,480 something megawatts already installed, in the, in, ready in, in the currently operating, generating, on-grid connected Okay. Uh, power power stations. 
So when the uh, president says extra 4,000 to make it 11,000, I don't really understand if he's talking about installed capacity or he's talking about available capacity. Okay. Currently, we have installed capacity of over 13,000 and available capacity that ranges between 7,005 and 8,000. Okay. But the system can take uh, between three, three, seven to 4,000. Recently, I think on, on the seventh, TCN and the minister have been celebrating, they got um, 5,375 megawatts on the seventh for a few seconds, but anyway, for politics. That, okay, well, all we'll that thought will come back to you. Uh, Pedro, let me bring you in here. Now, the, the, the power sector privatization is in its sixth year, and different yes. analysts have, have, have mixed views on whether or not on how successful it's been. Most of the people that I have spoken to, most of the analysts that I have spoken to have said that they believe that these power sector reforms have failed. But the government, the Minister of Power, insists that, look, the strategy of incremental power is working. If we go back to when they came on board in 2015, 2014, 2015, we know what it was. And looking at where we are today, there's been progress. But I know that PwC Nigeria, you've done extensive research on the power landscape here in Nigeria. And you have a couple of ideas in terms of how across the value chain things can go and can be better and can be better strengthened. But let's hear, I would like to hear your thoughts and your perspective on the power sector reforms itself from 2013 up to date. What are those big, those achievements we've made? And but what, in your opinion, are also those shortfalls? Okay, thanks so very much. I think um, the power sector reform is in progress. And if you ask me, is it still a work in progress? And both the, the Genco, the transmission and distribution, there's a lot of work to be done. And I can dare say there's work, a lot of work has been done already. Um, so if, if you talk about the stock capacity like that, that uh, Joe mentioned, uh, that we need to continue to expand in stock capacity. We need to continue to invest in transmission, and we need to continue to invest in distribution. I know the distribution uh, guys are always like the like the whipping boys in the industry because they are seen as the guys that collect the money. But they have a lot of challenges themselves, and I think as we go ahead, we'll, we'll talk about the challenges and how they can face it. But um, based on the work we have done as PwC, we think a lot of the distribution companies at the moment are investing heavily, particularly in um, metering in um, enumerating their customers and just ensuring that the cash is collected for the cash to flow uh, back up to both the uh, discos and the, um, and the transmission. So work has been done and work is still ongoing. Um, I, I see this that even the next 20 years as a country, we need to come to invest heavily in the power generation se sector and distribution and, tr and transmission. Okay, thank you, Pedro, for that. Uh, Tunji, let me come back to you. Like Pedro said, more investments needed. Mm -hmm. But of course, if we do not clean up the system, if there are all these myriad of issues that keep coming up every single day, even though sometimes the government says otherwise, mm -hmm. how do we move forward? Okay. All right. Um, I agree with Pedro. Um, and as he rightly said, a lot of investments has been put in by the um, discos investors. But you see, um, much would have been um, done and easy to do if um, attentions are paid um, you know, to the right um, uh, gray areas in the sector. So uh, for us, there are things that we, you don't need um, too much to do. Um, if, for instance, um, George talked about um, the Genco uh, capacity. Um, the regulator itself can look at um, the definition of the capacity and the dim capacity and give us clarity. You could also you know, um, look at the uh, acquisition loan that the investors are putting into the um, industry and then give it to a bank of industry at an you know, extended period and even at a lower interest so, such that more money can come in. You could also um, reintroduce the fixed charge which was taken away to allow for you know, uh, some form of you know, injection of liquidity for the disco to expand the operation. So, all these things can be done without necessarily, you know. And this thing you know, that you brought to the attention of the government, the, the Ministry of, uh, of Power? Of, the, of the course, uh, you know, the minister knows, the CBN knows. In fact, we talked to what the is, CBN. What is the response? Uh, well, everybody has been lukewarm, possibly because of uh, politics and possibly because, you know, you know, we don't know the outcome of what 2019 election is going to be. And so, you know, however, if we, we can uh, place our industry, our power sector, based on election calculation, we just needed to do what is right. And that's why the discos have almost, you know, um, you know, um, given up. Huh. That are we really serious in, um, you know, attending um, to, to the uh, well, issues? That is a, you know? that is a th those are very strong words. Joy, let me bring you in here. And we were talking about quick fixes here uh, post election. And of course, like I said, if we cannot uh, solve many of these problems, uh, some of these problems moving forward will be difficult. For Jenkos, what are some of those quick fixes that you think that we can begin to explore? 
Okay, thank you. Although I'm here to speak about the Jenkos, but um, the Jenkos sit at the vantage position where their product needs to be transmitted, it needs to be distributed, and then um, uh, money collected to be able to enable them pay up their debtors in the upstream, like mm -hmm. the gas suppliers and all the rest. So I will speak um, a solution to the sector itself, because if the sector is fixed, then Jenko's problem will be fixed. And one of such problems will be, number one for me, will be political, strong political will to resolve the current issues. If we have a strong political will, um, I'm sorry to make reference to the past administration. Uh, I happened to be part of the presidential task force then that was advising the past administra administration. And I saw the zeal with which uh, number one and number two were so focused on pushing the issues, the agenda in the past sector. If we can have such a resuscitated, strong political will, then these issues will be resolved. You heard my colleague saying that the discos are already frustrated. Are we really serious? The frustration cuts across everyone. The operators are like, come, is this market ever going to work? But with a strong political will, this will work. Number two, uh, there is need for a reset of the flawed design and implementation. If you look at the, the value chain, um, a lot of people, I'm sure PwC will agree with me, if they are not uh, trying to be political correct, that there are some flawed areas in terms of design implementation. If you look at EPSTRA, which is the act that regulates the power sector, uh, it, it's so elaborate and it covers so many areas, licensing and so many things. But the question is, is it being implemented? At, uh, those uh, outlined uh, benchmarks or KPIs in the uh, EPSTRA, is it being enforced? So you, it's one thing to make a law, is another thing for it to be enforced. So what is stopping NEC or the market operator from implementing those uh, KPIs? So um, there is need for us to reset the market if we see there is a, a flawed design. Thirdly, the market needs to be uh, data driven. He will agree with me. Um, uh, the, as you know, you mentioned that the power sector is in its sixth year. Until date, it can confirm with me that we don't know our customer demographics. Plot. We need to take a short break. Okay. Thank you for your time so far. Uh, I've been speaking to Joy Ogaji, Executive Secretary, Association of Power Generation Companies, and Dayton Jade, Regulatory Manager of the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, and Pedro Motueme, partner at PwC Nigeria, who joins us from Abuja. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back to pick up from where we left off to join us again. Welcome back to Beyond Markets. If you're just joining us, we are discussing current trends in Nigeria's past sector. And of course, we're looking at some quick fixes uh, that we can explore post-elections. And my guests today are Joy Ogaji, Executive Secretary, Association of Power Generation Companies, Adetunji Adeye, Regulatory Manager of the Association of, Ni of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, and Pedro Motweme, partner at PwC Nigeria, who joins us from Abuja. Pedro, I'd like to start with you. Now, you've heard uh, comments uh, from Joy and Adetunji, especially focusing on those uh, challenges within that's built in the generation and the distribution part of the value chain. I'd like you to respond to some of those challenges because it would appear that if we do not sort those challenges out, uh, or perhaps some of them uh, could actually have some quick fixes, but there might not be the political will at the moment to do so. What are your thoughts? Uh, there are so many challenges in the industry, and my, my take is that both the uh, players and the regulators need to work together to solve the problem. Uh, it's working together collaboratively that we solve the problems. Um, sometimes when you listen to the politicians and some of the things they say, you, you know those things are not correct, uh, particularly because you, you do know the players in the industry and you are involved in the industry. Uh, but, 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 but you know the reality of the matter is that we are in the political terrain and therefore politicians will say things to appease to their, to their um, um, superiors or to the populace. So take the example of the um, um, pricing, the appropriate pricing. Uh, the former government increased the price at a time, and then because of reaction, they just brought it back. And this current government has not been able to increase the price. And the discourse will tell you that without appropriate pricing uh, of the power, they cannot uh, have money to, to uh, continue to operate in industry. One of the issues that we, are, we, we, we need to deal with, for example, in industry is power theft. 
And you'll find that, that both the rich and the poor, they're still in power. But there's no law in Nigeria dealing with the power theft and how to handle that. So that's one issue that needs to be dealt with. So, so my take on this is there are many challenges across the entire value chain from the generation to the transmission to the distribution. But those issues need to be, uh, be dealt with as a team and not and not uh, either party playing against the other person. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because uh, as I was telling our guests in the studio while we wanted to break that, I've, have, I've sat down a couple of times with the power minister and most of the time, yes. you know, he's focusing on the strategy, the incremental power strategy. And he talks about, you know, all that's been done, all the positives, the shift to, uh, the, sh the shift to alternative energy, looking, you know, using uh, alternative, you know, power sources and that those are working and the fact that, you know, we're seeing that incremental power. So I'd just like to hear your thoughts. Would you, do you think that there is a disconnect between what the realities on the ground is or are that's looking at the value chain between the Jenkos, the Discos, TCN, NBET, and the rest of them, and what the minister, the, the power ministry is doing in terms of how they're achieving, uh, moving on to achieve those targets that they've set for the power sector? Yes, I think there is a disconnect, and you have to also have to agree that the, the power minister, who is a politician, would like to always pen the best picture. Um, but the reality is those who have put their money in the business who also want to get um, an appropriate returns for their investment. Uh, so on the one hand, the, the, the minister was talking about what he's doing and all the good things he's doing. On the other hand, the, the, the players, the investors are talking about the challenges they're facing in getting their money back. Uh, one thing we do, know in, we do need in this industry, is we need a lot of collaboration and we need a lot of patient capital. So if you're in the disco, for example, and you invested money, you think you could get your returns immediately, but that returns is not coming as, as you expect. So you need patient capital. Uh, earlier on, uh, I think as Tunji was talking about, um, you know, uh, getting additional loans or getting investors. Now those investors need to know that the money will not come immediately. It's a long-term play. So long-term play is what we require in industry. Working together with every player in the industry is always required. And um, we should stop making policies out of the, this issue. This is a big issue. It's a serious issue. And we, if we don't solve the power problem in Nigeria, we cannot move forward. Tunji, let me let me bring you in here. I mean, we know what the issues are. So, but then going forward, what what can we expect? I mean, we talk. I mean, the whole purpose of this discussion was to talk about quick fixes, and I don't know. I don't I don't get a sense that you know there might be quick fixes because if there's a suggestion of what a quick fix is, there's also the political will on the part of the right. government or the regulator to do it, to actually do it. Right. So, I mean, but what are you hoping for going forward? All right. Um, um, I think uh, Pedro um, start, started um, on some of the points. Um, it's um, more of collaboration uh, with the uh, overseeing ministry that's the Ministry of Power. Um, some of the um, initiatives are good, they're desirable, but it's been done in a disruptive manner and in such a manner that does not really um, favor investment in the, in the sector. So we want to look um, uh, beyond this election to see that um, any uh, initiative of the federal government going forward on power sector will be such that will um, be um, collaborative and that will bring confidence um, on the investors uh, part to, to keep investing in the sector. And also, um, you know, uh, Pedro talked about um, certain uh, legislative intervention that we do desire. Um, the uh, issue of energy theft is a big one, so I would like um, to see action on the on the part of the legislators when that comes, when when the next uh, okay, uh, something so comes. Okay, sorry to but is there that one particular issue that perhaps could be a deal breaker if not solved? That could draw for the discos. Oh yes, it is, um, and it's not only for the discos, but it, for the be, sector. Is that just, yes, that's what the, um, you know, the liquidity in the, in, the, in the sector is just a timing bomb. It's, if it's not quickly addressed, it's going to be, you know... What, what's uh, the short term? I mean, what's, okay. Is there a quick fix so, for that? Yeah, what? the quick fix for that is to, okay, first of all, recognize the shortfall and build it into the, um, uh, the payment, you know, that uh, discos are making to embed. So the, the um, uh, sector deficit is calculated, mm -hmm. is known. So if you then, um, it's actually from about 33% of remittance. So if you then re um, recognize that and put it as some form of payment so that it takes away... Uh, you know that 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 um, you know the collection uh, and payment that the discos are making to upstream. Once you had that, it it makes it a, lo a little bit healthier, and also then it gives uh, more money to to the genco. But if you have a um, sector that is built, um, I mean a, a shortfall that is building, and then you you ignore it completely. The Jenko will never get enough. The upstream will never get enough. Okay. So and the disco will keep struggling. They wouldn't even have enough to do the expansion, the metering, and you know improve all, all, all the infrastructures. Joy, let me bring you in here. I know you have a lot to say, but before we before you react to that, I would like to bring. I mean, this is a recent development. Uh, just uh, uh, earlier this week, the new eligible customer scheme, where uh, the government was said was quoted. I mean, it's in, it's made headlines today that Jenko's. 
that gone are the days where the Jenkos will say that they no, no longer have uh, customers buying, you know, to buy their products. So you now have the power to go out and source for customers yourself. The government will no longer augment you know, the short, your gaps for you. I'd like you to respond to that first. Um, I believe that the permanent secretary must have been misquoted. Um, this is because it has um, uh, it has a very wide-ranging ramification to the power sector. It means that Jenkos can now um, look for their customers anyhow arbitrarily. Uh, they are not bound to the contract to NBET. Uh, they, they are not also bound to the uh, performance agreement with BP. And so they can just employ marketers to market their products. So, for example, Transcorp has a capacity of 701 megawatts. So Transcorp can now just employ marketers and go around, sell 701 megawatts. They are not committed to the discos. Okay. This will affect the discos business because it is tied to what power they can get to sell. Okay, so basically you do not think that this is something that's... I, I think it was, it was must have been... Definitely not. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, yes. I believe that it must have been misquoted. misquoted. And I expect uh, the ministry to quickly make a rejoinder and put the right statement out there. Otherwise, okay. it's, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, the, the eligible customer re regulation and policy is one that we've objected to, um, objected to since um, the um, beginning. Why? It's, it's such that uh, this disrupts the whole power sector because it gives you uh, an option to cherry pick the best and paying customers of the discos and which who guarantee the revenue assurance back to the value chain upstream. So if you take those customers away, uh, you are not going to have a wholesome market. You are going to have a weaker, you know, um, you know, value chain because then um, the performing uh, customers are, would have been cherry picked. You have the worst paying customers as the pack, and then you, you are not going to have enough uh, income or collection to actually improve. And more so, it's not even awesome also for the generation companies because the power cost across all the thermal station. It's higher than other forms. So it's only the hydro-led generation companies that would be able to actually service the eligible customer, the so-called eligible customer. No eligible customer that can get power cheaper than what it is on the grid today in Nigeria, except the hydro. And so if you even look at the generation side of it, it's not working for them because most of the Jenkos that we have are um, thermal-based uh, Jenkos. So you, you can see that the policy it's a very um, wrong one for the old sector itself. Okay, no, let no, me, no, not even. Let me, just, the, not even Pedro, let me just bring you in here. I'd like to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on this the new eligible customers uh, initiative or scheme? Okay, so you know earlier on you're looking for quick, quick fixes. Yes. Maybe this is one of the quick fix <laughs> that, that was the government was, was talking, <laughs> talking about. <laughs> but you see, the, the sector um, requires more than a quick fix. You need a long-term thinking strategy. Not just something that, that you, you know, say, I've done this and I've done this. No, no. Something that has to be long term and has to be sustainable and has to ensure there's no collapse of the system. So I, I think the eligible customer is a good idea. If it's just for the excess power that they couldn't uh, sell to embed, if that's what you are dealing with, then I think it's a good idea. To say, look, you're very controlling this power to, to the uh, embed, but you have uh, additional capacity. So go look for customers other than when you're very contracted. That way, at least for the, for the uh, Jenkos, they don't get additional money. They can you know, price that at a premium. And for the discos, they still have a business ongoing. But if, you, if based on what we think that the, the public sector have said yesterday, that you say, look, Jenkos, going forward, sell everything you want to the highest paying customer, then the whole system will collapse. Okay, now earlier we we're talking about uh, for the discos, the uh, uh, data, knowing where the customers are, uh, <coughs> properly, adequately metering them, and just data that we can you know that can be relied on and then we're, if we're talking about pricing or cost reflective tariff we know that yes customers are paying for uh power that they consume what are your thoughts on the issue of pricing the issue of uh cost reflective tariff i've spoken to the minister about it and i, I honestly it was just neither here nor there in terms of how it could actually work i i strongly believe that we need a cost reflective tariff i strongly believe that and i think nigerians are actually paying for power at the moment. How, what do I mean by that? Most Nigerians have a generator at home, a small generator. Now that generator is already <laughs> cost reflected because that is the actual cost of it. Now I would prefer to pay the, um, the discos more money if I don't need to use generator anymore because I'm sure that I will have cleaner, better, more stable power. So I mean, I think that we need a cost reflected tariff and whoever wins the election are coming and the next government needs to ensure that that is done so we can put away the policies and deal with the economics of, of the power sector.
We need oh. a cost of tariff. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pedro, for talking to us today. We're, we have to let you go. But thank you for being a part of today's uh, conversation. Pedro Amato, I'm a partner at PwC. You're welcome, uh, Of course, uh, joining us from Abuja, Joa Gaji. She's the Executive Secretary, Association of Power Generation Companies. Adetun Giadi, um, Regulatory Manager of the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors. That's it on this edition of Beyond Markets. We thank you so much for being a part of it. But remember, you can watch the show at 5 p.m. West African time daily and have access to all previous episodes of Beyond Markets on our website at cnbcafrica.com. You can also stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets. And of course, you can send tweets to my Twitter handle too at Esther O. Awone. For myself and the team, it's bye for now.